and welcome to Sports Opinion, the weekly sports talk show on Channel 18. That is Public Access TV. My name is Dirk Keller. It's been a while since we've been together, guys. Three Jay, weeks. Yeah. And I thought, you know, let's bring a special guest in. We've got George Wine. George is the longtime uh, University of Iowa Athletic Department Sports Information Director, the second sports information director ever. And uh, he's met a host of different interesting individuals and has had a lot of adventures in the uh, collegiate athletic world so i thought we'd get a chance to talk to him about that uh, george welcome glad to be here my pleasure we tried to get you here on the show for a long time and we finally uh, have you and uh, that's great <laughs> you said the second sports information director was bud Suter, the first no eric wilson eric wilson okay and eric benny wilson, benny wilson. <laughs> eric, eric, yeah. eric created the job in 1924 and uh, he retired in 1968. He had it for 44 Is years. That wow. right. I was Goodness. here for 28, and Phil Hattie's had it since, and he's retiring this year. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. When is he done, Phil? He's finished, I think he's off the payroll uh, June 30th. June 30th. Yeah, and, and Steve Rowe is the fourth <coughs> in sports information director. Okay. The school wow. has not had many. No. That's incredible. Had a lot more presidents in that time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more presidents. I wonder how many of those had presidents had spouses <laughs> getting paid for yeah. Yeah. the job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's quite a controversy, isn't it? Oh, I think it's growing. Oh, I think so, yeah. At <laughs> yeah, 3 o'clock, we'll find out. Is that right? Oh, I don't know, but she's going to be interviewed. Oh, really? By who? I don't know. Press citizen, I think. Oh, wow. Well, George, yeah. now, so you started at uh, university in, what, 68? 68, yeah. And uh, who hired you then? Forrest Evashevsky. He did. Yeah, uh, but uh, also, uh, mm -hmm. it was a joint appointment out of public information and, uh, and the athletic department. Uh, Gordon Strayer mm -hmm. and Evie uh, brought me to, uh, I was at Memphis State. I, I'm an Iowa guy, and I worked at Northern Iowa, which was an Iowa State Teachers College yep. back, yeah. in six, mm -hmm. back in the 50s and 60s. And then I went to Memphis State, and then I came up here. All of it sports information? All sports information. What kind of sports did uh, Northern Iowa at that time have? A good program. A good program. And uh, it was what we called a college division program, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, had very little financial aid for athletes. But we had a good program. We had, we had a terrific baseball battery up there when you're – uh, Eddie Watt, you guys remember oh, Eddie yeah. Watt? Oh, yeah, sure yeah. Eddie, Eddie Watt and Dwayne Josephson were the oh, yeah. were at the battery. He was with the White Sox. Watt yeah. pitched for the Orioles for a long time, and Josephson were, was a catcher for the White Sox. Yep. They were also the starting guards on the basketball team. I'll be darned. Really? Yeah. yeah. But it was, you know, it was a division, it was a, what we would call today a division two school, I guess. Uh -huh. And you know, you and I is having financial difficulties now, as yeah. you guys yes. know, and I'm not so sure maybe that's the direction they ought to go again. There was nothing wrong with that. We had a really good program at the time, and we had, and. Uh, See where someone got into the deal up there, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I didn't hear know that. that. Ticket department. Oh, uh, I didn't <clears throat> hear that, yeah. Evidently, yeah, when he would give refunds. <laughs> On the credit cards, he takes the yeah, refund. Yeah. <laughs> to the credit card. Who was that? That guy up at ticket North, manager. I ticket guess. manager oh, up there. You and I. Ex ticket manager. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's been a while back. Yeah. yeah. A year or two. Yeah. Now, George, you grew up in North English, right? North English. North English, Iowa. Now, how did a boy from North English, Iowa, get interested in sports information? Uh, I I came down here and went to journalism school, or came over here and went to journalism school. And uh, I had a, a professor, an advisor named Bill Porter. Maybe Earl might have remembered sure, Bill. I know. Really, a, really a good professor. That's when the journalism school was a top-notch, one of the mm -hmm. best in the country. And um, anyway, uh, Iowa State Teachers College had a job opening up there in their college relations office for a guy primarily to do sports, and he recommended me. And, I went up. Isn't that neat? Yeah. That's great. I didn't really, you know, there were a lot of jobs at that time, and like today. Did Evie interview you? Uh, Evie interviewed me, yeah. Yeah. What year was that? 68? 1968. Oh, 68. You, yeah. you, you were here, and all hell broke loose. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I knew that. yeah. <laughs> were you, how long were you in Northern Iowa, George? Seven years. Seven years. What year did you graduate from Iowa? 56. Uh, Oh, really? Yeah. So you were here for the 
No, you weren't. Yeah, you I, were. I, ju I just, I just missed. Just the, missed I just the missed Bowl. the really good Evashevsky years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was here for a couple of Evish teams, but yeah. Uh, and then uh, when I came to work here, uh, Ray Nagel was a football mm -hmm. coach, and oh, Ralph yeah. Miller was a basketball coach, and. Uh, the football co team and the program was in turmoil, as you guys recall. Yeah. Yes. But the basketball team was very good. Mm -hmm. I mean, and yeah, I, would, I was I was mm -hmm. in on that 1970 team that you know had averaged 104 points a game mm -hmm. and went 14 and 0 in the Big right. Ten. I still think that was the best team I ever had. Yeah. Probably could have won the national championship. Yeah. What was Ralph Miller like to Ralph work was with? A good guy for you. Always had the door open. Yeah. Yeah. He would talk basketball with anybody. Yeah. He was a terrific guy. It kind of crusty, you know. He had he had a fainting act on the sideline. We'd get he'd get up and throw his hands back and almost pass out. But he had his players were coach to catch him. Before, Is that right? Before he hit the I've floor. never heard about this. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, they never let him hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and if they did, they were off the team. <laughs> wow, I never heard that. Earl, yeah. did you remember that? Yes, I do. Is that right? I knew we were all disappointed when he took the Oregon job. Mm -hmm. that was a, you know that was a funny it was a funny year when you think of the 1970 team that team averaged 104 points a game and winning a, going undefeated in the Big Ten. Not what there was no shot clock, mm -hmm. no shot clock. Not one team ever tried to hold the ball on us ever. Why? I really you, you look back on that you think somebody would have tried to come tried in and to, yeah. hold yeah. and stop the action, but they didn't do it. Well, a few years also later they started that yeah. four oh, corners. Yeah. 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 I don't know if that was yeah. Dean, Dean Smith. Smith. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, and then of course uh, Lou Olson used that here with Ron mm -hmm. Lester. Yeah, a great success. There was also no three point shot then yeah. to yeah. average no that many points. Oh yeah, uh, Rick, Rick, Rick Mount scored 58 oh. points over at the field house one night. And we beat him. And we lost. Beat, we beat yes. <laughs> uh, if there had been a three-point shot that night, Mount probably would have scored seventy. Wouldn't it like 109, 107, yeah. or something well, like that? Well, I think it was. I think it was something like that. Yeah. yeah. Earl, were you there that night? I, I probably. I'm was. sure you were. Yes. Yeah. I was there. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah, I was there. Is that right? And then we went to Purdue, and Mount scored 63, <laughs> and we beat him again. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that guy can shoot that. coming out of the locker room. <laughs> but just think, if there was three points, um, probably would have had 80, 90 points. Yeah. So what happened with uh, with the basket with Ralph Miller? What happened? Why did he leave? Did he ever uh, sit down? You know, you know, he, you? he told me. Uh, I asked him directly. I said, "Ralph, would you be because it was a lateral move? He went to Oregon State, yeah. which was a decent program, and he yeah. had great success yes, out there." Yes, he did. But I said, "Would you be leaving here if the football coach and the athletic director were getting along?" And he said, "Probably not. Probably not. I think he just yeah. got tired of that." Yeah, that's right. I wow. think he got tired of it. It, it, it was so. not a pleasant atmosphere. Maybe he thought he was next. <laughs> Andy, Andy was a, a great football coach and a lousy athletic director. Well, he was a good athletic director in a lot of ways, but he did and create the tension in the program, and yeah. you never knew when he was going to nail you. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he was an interesting guy to work for. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a, have you got any good Evie stories? That you can tell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I can tell a couple. Uh, okay. He and uh, I, first year I was here, I I, uh, I thought it would be a good public relations move to put the uh, put some members of the news media, feature them in the program, a game, football game program, <laughs> put the picture in a, and a little biographical information on them, and that went along for a couple of weeks and. And then one week, one game, I featured Gus Schrader at the Cedar Rapids Gazette. Well, I did not know Gus and Al, uh, Gus and uh, <laughs> Heavy were on the outs. <laughs> so anyway, the Monday after the game, Heavy saw me in the hallway and he said, "Come into my office." <laughs> and he had the program lying on his desk, and he says. Uh, I never want to see that guy in our football program. <laughs> yeah, he he uh, he was an interesting. Uh, he was uh, interesting. Yeah, he, uh, an interesting study, as you might say. Uh, so was yeah. Evie uh, the kind of guy who would tell you he's not allowed in the press room post game? Or I tell you how I tell you how uh, <laughs> he never did that with me. No, he really kind of let he he really never really interfered with how I ran uh, my operation much. Uh, he. he uh, but what he did do, you know, how times have changed. Uh, our press, football press box then was for the press. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it was for the press. Yeah. 
And and Bob Flora, who you guys mm-hmm. know, was Evie's athletic assistant athletic director. He had one assistant athletic director. Now, now they got about fifteen of them, yeah. <laughs> if, if not more. Right. So Bob yeah. Flora was the assistant. Now Bob Flora's job on Saturday at a football game would be, he would prowl the press box and look for people who were supposed to be there. And then he'd just literally throw them out. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, uh, one, and we would have a staff meeting on Monday morning. And uh, I won't tell you the name of the person, but, but see, Evie, Evie, Evie did, not like the, did not like the guy that Flora found up there and <laughs> bounced him. So... Uh, Evie said in the stab me, he says, oh, okay, who let that so-and-so in? Uh, so, uh, he looked at me and said, did you do that? I said, Evie, I don't even know him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so well, he, he, he got to the bottom of it, who did it, and just dressed the guy down. But, you know, that's the way, that's the difference now. I mean, he, it was strictly for yeah. the press. Kind of the reason yeah, that, and that's there. kind of a novel, novel <laughs> idea. Press box for the press. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, th- did they have coaches up there at all in that era? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. They oh, would yeah. have oh, coaches. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i tell you who started that, I think, was uh, Jerry Burns when, mm-hmm. uh, on every staff. Mm-hmm. I, don't think, uh, mm-hmm. I don't think anybody was ever in the press box before Jerry Burns went up there. Mm-hmm. And if for and some they, reason they decided they would send back in the 50s, you know. Yeah. Well, they called him his spy in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> Evie, didn't, Evie didn't like spies. <laughs> he, if I remember right, Purdue interviewing. Yeah, Purdue. Purdue. Yeah. 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 They had to be yeah. I don't know if those guys are pure or not. <laughs> now, when you were a, a student here at the university, did you work for the Daily Iowan? Yes. You did? Uh huh. And so you covered the games? I, I covered. Uh, covered uh, you know, we had those great basketball teams uh, with yeah. Charm Sherman, Seaberg, and Kane, and Logan. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Deacon Davis and mm-hmm. so and so. Uh, and yeah, I covered those those two teams for my last two years. Mm-hmm. And those were fellow students of yours. Yeah. Did yep. you develop relationships yeah. with those yeah. guys? Yeah. The original when I, when five I, five. When I when I got the Iowa job, the first call I got was from Charm Sherman. Who wanted to sell me a house up here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was down in Memphis. I got a, a phone rang. It was Charm. He said, "I got a house for you." <laughs> <laughs> did you buy it? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, was Richardson his partner at the time? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sherman Richardson. They're yeah, both yeah. dead. Yeah. yeah, they are. Yeah. 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 Um, Prematurely. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, so uh, we had Abby, and then we had some others, and finally Hayden Fry. Yeah, well, Bob, Bob followed Nevyshevsky. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. His athletic director. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. Uh, well, let's yeah, let's talk yeah, about Bump. Yeah. We'll get to Hayden in yeah. a minute. Yeah. Well, he, he Bump Bump certainly lightened the mood in the athletic department. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bump Bump was a terrific athletic director. He what was that? Seventy? Nineteen seventy? Bump came mm-hmm. up in nineteen seventy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, Evashevsky left in seventy, and Nagel was fired in seventy. And you know, he was fired in '69, then rehired. Right. For that. And then he was not; his contract was not renewed in '70. And then Lauderberg came in in '71 for three years, and then Bob Cummings in football f- for five years, and then Hayden in '79 for 20 years. Yeah. And as they say, the rest is history. So we, you know, we've had 33 years of really good football, generally speaking. We've had a couple of bad years in there, but yeah. sure. Um, you know, you know, we've gone to how sure. many, many, many bowl games we've gone to now? Game 33 years. I would oh, say, boy. I would say 33 years. I'd say 25 bowl games at least. Probably. Yeah. Bud's been to about every one of yeah. them. <clears throat> now, uh, you mentioned Hayden, and speaking of history, you wrote a book with Hayden yeah. called High Porch Picnic. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the process yeah. of. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, coming up with the idea was it your idea? No, a publisher came to us and uh, approached us about the book. And Hayden initially wasn't going to, didn't want to do it. And then the, the more we thought about it, I, I, I told him, I said, you know, Hayden, if if you don't do it one on your own yourself, somebody's got to do one on you. So you might as well do your own you know, and get your get your story yeah. out there that <laughs> you want out there because you know how that goes to the coach. That's right. So anyway, we uh, we did sign on with the publisher and. Uh, over in Champion, Illinois, and, and the book was a big success, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I Is think it still in print? No. Uh, well, I think you could probably get it at Amazon.com, maybe, mm-hmm. or something like that. But uh, yeah. it, it, it was a, uh, 
It was done by a publisher that uh, did books on people like Harry Carey, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, Jack Buck, mm -hmm. and a lot of co a lot of they they done a lot of coaches, a lot in the Big Ten. But this book was the biggest seller they ever had. Is that right? Oh, oh yeah, by, yeah, it outgunned every mall. Yeah. So by That's the time by the time that book came out, Hayden had resigned, correct? When the book came out, Hayden had just retired. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah retired, I should say. Um, so he was still living in town. He was, yes. So you were? Did you go out to his house and? Well, the, the way I, the way I put the the way I put the book together, I mean, I I knew all I needed to know about Hayden yeah. as, as a coach at Iowa. What I didn't know was his story back growing up in Odessa, Texas, mm -hmm. and going to mm -hmm. college in Baylor and life in the Marines, and then an assistant coach here and there, and then he wound mm -hmm. up coaching at SMU before here in North Texas also. So those are the things I had to dig out of him. And I did about 30 hours of uh, audio tape interviews with him probably, and I got a lot of good stuff. And uh, I, <laughs> he, he, used to, he used to get sidetracked, you know, and tell me a really, really good juicy story. And then, and then he'd lean forward and say, but George, you can't put that in the book. <laughs> so I tell him, I, if, uh, if I outlive him, I've got another book coming. <laughs> Juicy stories. <laughs> juicy stories. Good, 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 good stuff. Hey, good Pride, stuff. Juicy <laughs> stories. Juicy <laughs> stories. <laughs> now, you've got about 30 hours of tape of uh, I've got 30 hours of tape. Yeah, I'm right at 30. And what'd you do with that tape? I've got them stored in a secret place. Do you have any plans for them, like donating them to the I'll, I'll probably give them to the university. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I bet that would be really yeah. interesting. <laughs> wow. George, yeah. was that book ever made, uh, like, book on tape? Was that available? Or? No, we Just never did a, did, ever did audio on that book. Yeah. Uh, I don't think this company ever did audio. Uh, hmm. Somebody suggested that at one time, but no, but we never yeah, did. Okay. I, I think Hayden reading that book would have been really good if he would have sat down to read it. I don't know whether he'd have had the patience to do that or not, but in, Hayden, <laughs> in Hayden's Texas draw, that would have been a good book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it, though? Yeah. Sure would. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Because, you know, he's a, he was a school teacher and... Yeah. Yeah, we would have done that really easily. Wasn't he also, was he a drill instructor in the Marines? Uh, no. Well, you know what he did most of the time in the Marines? He coached football. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he coached football most of the time. And <laughs> he, he wound up, uh, he coached at Quantico, mm -hmm. and uh, then San Diego, I think, and then he wound up uh, in Japan. Would this have been the s oh. during World War II or after? after? It was after World War II during okay. the Korean War. Okay. He, he, Hayden was a Big, he's big on it. There were three loves in Hayden's life: his football, his family, and the Marines. And I'm not sure what order those yeah. would be, but probably his family would be first. But mm. the Marines in football. I mean, he loved the Marines. He loves yeah. the Marines. That's I have a lot yeah, he, of he older me, men he, his he, age do. He told me. He told me that he he really wanted to coach football, and it had not been for that, he would have made a career of the Marines. Mm -hmm. yeah. I can I see him doing been, that. Yeah, because yeah. he you know, he would have been a, he was a good gyrene. Yep. Well, you, now you, you wrote another book called The Black and Gold Memories. Yeah. Hawkeyes of the 20th Century, yeah. Was that after the High Porch Picnic yeah, book? Yeah, that was after the High Porch Picnic. And that, that's, that's just a collection of stories about Hawkeye athletes and coaches and games and eras. And, it's a good book, though. Yeah, it is a good mm -hmm. book. Thank you. I appreciate it. But that, it, it's a good <laughs> coffee table book. You know, it's a book you can pick up and read for 10 minutes yeah. and put it down and come back. And, because there's a lot of, it's a collection of short stories. Yep. Basically. Yeah. I gave that book as, for a lot of Christmas presents, yeah. and birthdays, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. You betcha. Yeah. And you know, nobody ever gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, they think they knew it. you already had one. <laughs> yeah. um, well, how about, let's back to Hayden Fry for a minute. Any other good stories that we don't know? That you can tell. <laughs> oh, you know, Hayden. Hayden was. Hayden was. Uh, I, I really think Hayden has saved Iowa football. Oh yeah. Well, yes. I, 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 that, that no is, doubt about it. It sounds like an exaggeration, uh -huh. but no. Iowa football was crippled when he came here. Mm -hmm. Really crippled. We were on life support. Oh, we yeah. really were. And uh, had he not been successful, I'm not sure where we were going. I'm serious about that. And that was no, it wasn't all Ray Nagel's fault. No, oh no, no. Ray Ray Nagel was a good coach. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and Bob Cummings was a pretty good yes, coach. Yes, yes. Uh, but anyway, you know, for one reason or another, both of them lost their jobs, and mm -hmm. 
and but the sport of Iowa football was dwindling. Our crowds were holding up pretty well, but yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you can only lose for so long. As Jim Zabo says, there was one or two bad decades in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everybody has one or two bad decades. <laughs> when, when came you know, he's Jim Zabo straight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're going to get to that. <laughs> Didn't we have, George, something like 18 non winning seasons in a row there? Yeah. 19, 18. 19, I believe. Yeah. 19, oh, wow. 19 non winning seasons. Mm -hmm. And he had uh, well, basically, losing records. His basically, first through two the years. 60s and 70s, yeah. we just didn't yeah. have a winning season. And some of those crowds were down at 38, 42,000 yeah. people. Yeah. Too. Well, I remember the I remember uh, <laughs> La uh, Lauderburg's last game mm. when we went 0-11 in 1973. I don't think there were 20,000 people in the yeah. stadium. I remember sitting in the south end zone, George, that game and wondering. What am I doing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a bad it day, was bad game. Sparse, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And Lauderdale mid fire before the game, you know. Just, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So and but he coached it anyway. He coached the game. Yeah. He took a car right with him. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> right, George. Pardon me. I said they, he took a car right with Bump. Yeah, he took it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's how he got the news. Huh? <laughs> Bump used to take his coaches on a. As Earl was talking about when, when Bump wanted to talk. And I think the reason he did that, Earl, was because he they got out of the building. Yes. And he took. They'd take a drive in the country where mm -hmm. nobody would bother him on the telephone or walk in the office. The secretary wouldn't knock on the door. Yeah. <laughs> and, that's right. And we, there used to be a joke of if Bump wanted to take you for a ride, say no, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. I didn't know about these rights. Oh, yeah. I can tell you about them. A little behind the scenes stuff there. Um, somebody else that I'd like to learn a little bit more about is Gary Kirtlemeyer, oh, yeah. former mm -hmm. assistant athletic director, former head wrestling coach at Iowa, and the guy who was at least indirectly and quite frankly the main reason Dan Gable came to Iowa as the head wrestling coach. Um, I knew Gary. In fact, I, Gary got me a job. Helped, really? Well, yeah. when I was a student, my dad told me to uh, go into Bump Elliott's office. He said, march into Bump Elliott. My dad grew up with him and, and ask him for a job. And I did. And Bump was very nice and took me over to meet Gary Kirtlemeyer, who took me for a ride <laughs> and drove me over to Kinnick <coughs> and uh, introduced me to uh, my soon-to-be boss, um, uh, Darryl Darryl Brown. Brown. Oh yeah, yeah. Brownie. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and Gary was just a really nice guy. But you knew him an awful lot yeah. better than I did. Yeah. Well, he was. He and I came to Iowa about the same time. He came as an assistant wrestling coach to mm -hmm. Dave McCuskey, who was a terrific mm -hmm. guy. Yeah. yeah. But Dave had a good program, but uh, and he would contend in the Big Ten. But uh, I think he might have won a couple of Big Ten championships, maybe. But Iowa State was the. The wrestling yeah, oh, I, Iowa State was was the epitome of college wrestling. In yep. that yeah, uh, Harold Nichols was the head coach, mm -hmm. and at that mm -hmm. you know that time Gable was just, <coughs> uh, just Gable was just emerging as the greatest college wrestler in the country mm -hmm. and all of that. And uh, anyway, um, uh, McCuskey retired, and Bump gave the job to Kurtlemeyer, and I remember Kurtlemeyer used to come up to my office and have coffee, and I mm -hmm. said to him, uh, Jerry, what are you going to do now that you're the head wrestling coach? He says, Well. He says, first of all, he says, I'm going to wrestle Iowa State, get them on the schedule, which we never see. They never wrestled. No, each no, other. never, no, 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 never did. Didn't, we didn't do anything with Iowa State. Didn't mm -hmm. play, play baseball with them. Yeah. And um, anyway, so I'm going to wrestle Iowa State, and then I'm going to beat Iowa State, and I'm going to win the Big Ten championship, and then I'm going to win the national championship. I said, oh, I said, yeah, really, it's just like that. <laughs> <laughs> pretty easy, huh? And by God, in two years, he did that. Yeah, yeah, he well, he you know he said the only way I can make this a really good program, a nationally ranked program, is to wrestle Iowa State, and I've got to beat them. Mm, that's right. And uh, mm -hmm. so he did that, and he won the. He won, I think his second year he won the. I think his second year he won the Big Ten championship, and then his third third year, third and fourth year, he won national championships. He won two national championships. Mm -hmm. Then he retired. Gave the job to Gable, and the rest, as they say, is history. Well, and he he kind of added insult to injury to Iowa State by I, taking I, Gable. By swiping Gable. Yeah, out that's out for sure. Yeah. One man. Yeah. 
Yeah. It turned everything around, yeah. really, for both programs. Roy and Roy Carver. Carver Roy, Roy, I was, was going to say, Roy Carver. Roy Carver was uh, <laughs> or a big wrestling fan. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that was his favorite sport, uh -huh. by far. I mean, no, nothing was even close to it. He took care he of was the a he Roy was a heavyweight at Illinois. Mm -hmm. Really? Uh -huh. And uh, he just loved wrestling. And uh, uh, he, when we were trying to build interest in the program, he, he, Roy contacted me and he said, what can I do to help wrestling? He said, I'll do anything. So I said, well, let me think about it. So I looked at our schedule and I noticed we had two wrestling meets over in Michigan, Michigan, Michigan State. And we played basketball at about the same time. But I figured I could get our media guys, some of our top writers, you know, to go over there for basketball. And then I would make them go to the wrestling <laughs> meets. Because they didn't cover wrestling. I mean, they didn't go to wrestling. They just didn't do it. And so <coughs> we, we loaded up uh, Roy's, uh, he had a Falcon jet mm -hmm. that seated about 15 people. Uh -huh. And I got... Russ Smith, Gus Schrader, Al Grady, uh, <laughs> somebody from the register, I got all the radio guys. We loaded up the plane, and I, I said, you guys, I said, you, th th you, this, this trip is on one condition, you've got to go to the wrestling meet and cover the wrestling meet. You've got to do it. <laughs> so they did it. Mm -hmm. and, did uh, they know what they were talking about? Didn't, no, not much. Yeah. Not much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they gave wrestling some some pretty good PR because we had a pretty good team by that time, mm -hmm. you know. And we were one of the national championships. Or but that's the one way that uh, Carver and I kind of got together. And he was he got a ball on his Falcon jet, picked up the tab, and did he, did he feed the uh, media? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, we we ate well, drank well, yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. Different era. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they can't tell the media what to do these days. No, that's right. That's right. But, but uh, <laughs> Roy was a big, big help and a very instrumental in building our wrestling. And because Gary, I know Gary, uh, and he worked together closely. I, I don't know how closely, but uh, <laughs> well, both, both are dead now, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. we'll never know. I guess. They worked pretty closely, I've read, to get Gable here. You know, yeah. we, we yeah. read about yeah. the clandestine yeah, right. things that they did. <laughs> going, well, whose idea was it to go to Dan Gable's parents? Gables told that story. Oh, I'm sure it was Gary's idea. Gary, Gary was a great thinker. You know, Gary was such a quiet, you know, Gary, Gary yeah. was such quiet, laid back. Guy. Very quiet. That's why when he told me what he was going to do with the wrestling program, I said, man, I can't believe it because I, I, this was kind of an easy going, laid back guy. You, know? <laughs> you ever see him get excited? No, I mean, even at, a, even at a match, he his would get kids were the same way. I worked with one of his sons and daughters yeah. pushing brooms over there at Carver and Kinnick yeah. and uh, or at Fieldhouse and Kinnick. And they were the same way. Nice kids, yeah. quiet, couldn't get a rise out of them. It was, you Church, know, we'd joke around some, a lot and couldn't get them to laugh. Was there some relationship between Gary's wife and Nichols? Yeah, uh, Nichols was her, her uncle. That's right. Who's her, Nichols? Is that right? Harold, oh, Harold Nichols. Harold, 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 Harold Nichols. Harold Nichols was a wrestling coach at Iowa, and they're both That's in right. Presco. Okay, say that right. again. Nick, Harold's Harold wife. Was, was, Harold Nichols was uh, Gary Kirtlemeyer's wife's uncle. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll be darned. Yes. Wow. <clears throat> and they're all all of them were from Cresco. Gary was Gary too. Gary too. Mm -hmm. And Nichols too. Nichols too. Uh -huh. I'm pretty so sure. I'm pretty sure, about, pre pretty sure about, well? I'm pretty sure yeah. about Nichols. Yeah. Did they get along well, Nichols and Gary Kernelmile? Uh, as far as I could tell, yeah. yeah. Did yeah. they ever? Did Gary ever wrestle Iowa State? Did his teams? Gary, Gary's team, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. He, he, oh so there yeah, was he, no problem getting them scheduled he, he, after he became No, I was, Iowa State was willing to schedule us, but in those days, we did not we did not compete with Iowa State yeah. in anything. Any, I mean, anything. We didn't play basketball with them. We didn't yeah. play football with them. We didn't yep. run track. We didn't golf, tennis, nothing. So the wrestling really started up. Yeah, the... kind of wrestling probably was about the first thing I can recall. Then we, mm -hmm. when, when they opened that new building in uh, uh, Hilton Coliseum, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our basketball team with Dick Schultz took a team over there and, and played a game. I remember that was the first time we'd played Iowa State in basketball for, I don't know, 30 years. Wow. How do you feel about that rivalry, George? you think it's good for both uh, schools? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I, I do, too. But I some so. people don't nope. care for it. Yeah, yeah I think I so. Don't. I don't. <laughs> well, you know... Paul Brechter used to say, Paul, you know, Paul Brechter wouldn't give Iowa State the time of day, which is one reason we didn't compete with Iowa State. Yeah. He said we had everything to gain and nothing to lose, and he just wouldn't. And That's how I feel uh, about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
I I think it's it's a, you know they they've got a nice stadium now they got a nice arena it's it's, it's a lot different uh, situation than yeah. it was 50 years ago. My first year here as a student was '77, and that was the year we renewed the football uh, game with Iowa State. And to this day, I have never seen the kind of excitement on campus and in town as that first week, first time that Iowa played Iowa State in football in, what, 50, 60 years? I mean, it had been a long time since my grandpa had been at Iowa State. Yeah. You know, I, Didn't they win the first three games? No, we won the first one, like okay. 12 to 10. Oh, that's right. And they were heavily favored. That's the one where they came out with the beat Iowa mm -hmm. on yeah, their Bob, jerseys. Bob Cummings was Bob, Bob, Bob Cummings was yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. His son was a quarterback, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, Bob, Bob, Jr. Jr. Bob yeah. Jr. was a quarterback as a freshman. Yeah. See, but now they got a nice stadium, nice and the, campus. And uh, who was it? Uh, did John Lazar run about? Uh, yes. he, John Lazar scored two touchdowns. He did, and he scored a very critical first down late in the game yeah. when we had the lead, and and uh, pretty much salted the game away. John Lazar from Team Iowa. Yes. Yeah. He was. We had two two players from Tampa. Well, you know the the, the way I look at that rivalry is, is it's, it's a, it is more important to Iowa State than it is to Iowa. All you need to do is look at their behavior when they beat us yep. mm -hmm. oh. versus our behavior when they, we beat them. You know, yep. we just yeah. kind of beat them and walk off the floor and go to the dressing <laughs> okay. room. Yeah. You know, they have a wild celebration, and, <laughs> that, and then that probably rubbed some people wrong like you. <laughs> yeah, and I can see why. Yeah, you know, they need I, to I, act I, like they've been there. Before, <laughs> you know? right. and, and they have been there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I wish they'd act yeah. like it. I, I ate with Bob Cummings that that particular night after the game. After the game. In '77, and, and he walked up to me and he hugged me and he said, hmm. "All he said was one word: finally, finally." <laughs> finally. Uh, yeah. Who was the? We had a kicker, Dave Holsklaw, I yeah. believe, who kicked a field goal to put us up. We were down 10-9, and it was a kind of a rainy, overcast day. Uh, it wasn't raining during the game, but it was threatening, <clears throat> and it was uh, I don't know, medium range field goal attempt. And that stadium got so quiet. I was on the sidelines working, and uh, I remember looking around going, geez, did something happen? <laughs> no, it's just the feeling. And he made it. Mm -hmm. And um, that, it, it again, was really kind of a dull game. It was a oh, very, yeah. very defensive game. You know, well, the, 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 that one touchdown run. Yeah, the defense, defense is dominated, yeah. Wow. So you mentioned Paul Breckler. Uh, tell us a little bit about him. They named the press box and luxury mm -hmm. suites now yeah. after him. I never worked for Paul. I knew him as a student, and he was always really good. I was with the Daily Iowa, and, and he was always very nice to me when I needed help when, from uh, the athletic director of the athletic department. But uh, he he had a great program in the 50s. I mean, he, had, mm -hmm. he his program in the 50s was about like Bumps was in the 80s. Mm -hmm. I, we were at the top of everything. Rolling. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. football and basketball. I mean, Evashevsky. Evashevsky had the best program in the Big Ten his last five years here, five or six years. Sensational. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Bucky O'Connor had the best basketball program in the Big Ten. And were, we were, were you a we're, student here when Bucky O'Connor was coach? Yeah. I was here for his two uh, championship teams. What was it like when he died? I mean, it was well, out of season, but... I was then working at Iowa State Teachers College, oh. and the state was absolutely stunned. He died mm -hmm. up near there, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he died up near Waterloo. He was coming up to speak at the Sports of Sorts Club, mm -hmm. which was a weekly group that they had up there, and uh, he died in a one-car accident, and nobody saw how the car went off the road. They kind of theorized he was dodging a chicken or something. There. Ducks. But that was just a theory, I yeah. think. Wow. He might have gone to sleep or something, who knows, but it was a one-car wreck, and uh, he was, I don't, I'm not sure, he was 40 years old yet, was he? No, I don't think 42, so. 42, 43 in there yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of guy was he? So terrific guy. Oh, yeah. So yeah. He's terrific. wonderful. Yeah. Just a, I was through and through. Yeah. Mm. Just a really yeah. nice person, yeah. He was a big buddy of Chris Myerson. Oh, yeah. Now there's a character. <laughs> Francis X. Kretzmeyer. Yeah, <laughs> Got any good Kretz stories? Oh, I know you do. <laughs> one, was, one was Max o Yoakum. <laughs> oh, that was Bacussi of Yoakum. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Francis Kretzmeyer was the longtime UI track, <laughs> oh, okay. coach, track and field coach. Yeah, okay. yeah. And a pretty, you know, pretty daggone good one. Yeah, uh -huh. he had some nice teams here. Yeah. He, he, uh, Won the Big Ten championship uh, the, year, the year before I came. Uh, 
I think in, in indoors he'd win. 68. His mm -hmm. outdoor team in 68 didn't win it that year. So it was indoors. I don't think, because that's the year I came here. I, I was here in May of 68. Hmm. And I. Well. He had Larry Resort and those guys were yeah. on the mm -hmm. team, I think. Yeah. So, uh, sh surely you've got a good Kretz story. story. <laughs> Uh, he, he he used to do a pretty good impersonation of uh, of uh, the guy. Uh, uh, tell, help me out here. The guy who did the public address at the Drake Relays. Earl. Uh, uh, I, I, I know who you're talking about, but I can't. Oh, he, tr he trailed his R's. And Chris would say, oh, for Christ's sake. I can't, I cannot think of his name. He was a legendary uh, guy yeah. in the public address. He, I mean, he, he really kind of made the Drake Relays. Mm -hmm. Sort of like Phil Addy made the our wrestling name. Had uh, that's yeah. Kermire Gary Kermire Kermire put, Kermire put Hattie on the. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. Yeah, didn't he, he did. Yeah, he, he said, "Go crazy." And he went crazy. No, I. All right, Gary Kermire tells Phil Hattie, who is the, ret the outgoing sports information director at Iowa, yeah. tells him to go crazy on the mic, just let her rip. What were some of the things that Phil Hattie used to say back uh, in the early days? I know there's some. Phil, Phil had certain people he would pick on. Uh, one was Ivor Stanley, who was a businessman, yeah. a friend of ours up in Cedar Rapids. Did you know Ivor? <laughs> I know Ivor. Phil would say, that, you know, this is before <laughs> six or eight thousand people in the field, the field, the old field house days. Phil would say, Ivor Stanley, call your psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. How'd you go to say? <laughs> <laughs> he, he's still doing that that far out there. But he's still doing stuff like that. If, uh, for instance, one of the visiting wrestling coaches objects to a call by the referee and yeah. is really demonstrative, yeah. he'll, uh, yeah, yeah. he'll make some snide comment. Well, Iowa, Iowa State claimed that Phil was worth six or eight points on the, for an meet. You know, they, <laughs> really? they really thought that. Yeah, they, they thought he got to the referee and now yeah, he was. You know, uh, he. Will he still do that, do you think? Yeah. Earl, he Earl's got a story here. Oh, God, I forgot yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, It'll come to uh, you. I was at a track meet one time, and uh, at, at, at the, uh, the, uh, the, old? At, uh, the track meets. Uh, yeah. Indoor track meet. Oh, at the field house? No. Oh, at the rec center? Rec, rec center. center, yeah. And, uh, uh, and I looked over and I saw Kretz lighting up a cigarette, sneaking it up in the far corner. And I told Hattie about it. <laughs> Hattie says, Tattletale. <laughs> Francis Kressmar, Francis Kressmar, <laughs> looking around. He said, Put out that Let's cigarette. See, see. <laughs> <laughs> this is on the PA? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was just fine. It was not a big crowd there. Yeah. Oh, I just. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, he. We had Phil on oh. last summer on mm -hmm. the show here. Yeah. And he tells some great stories. Oh. He doesn't go back as far as you. Do. <laughs> he, he's one of the last connections to the old field house. Yeah. You got Streifer. Yeah. You got uh, Coach Fred Mem or Fred Mems. Fred Mems, yeah. Um, there's one other that Phil mentioned. Uh, but in the department now. Yeah. Well, Bob. Well, of course, Bob's. Well, still working. Still, there, still I mean. working. Yeah. 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 I mean, well, I'll tell you what. In the in the department, I'm not sure there's anybody but Phil and Mims. Mims. Well, I can't. I can't think of anybody. Well, no, I don't think so. I'm going to say uh, Pam Fink. I don't think Pam Fink was. No. Old. Yeah. She, no. She, no. She's not old enough. That I was. Know. That was still Buzz. Yeah. Uh, Buzz. But she left and came back. Graham. Thank goodness. Pam. Yes, yeah. she did. Thank goodness. Yeah. Did you know Eric Wilson? Pardon? Do you know Eric? Oh, yeah, I know him well. Do you, do you know Betty? Oh, sure. As yet, every. Uh, they were sports information? Yes. Eric, Eric was my predecessor. Oh, okay. I, I knew him. I mean, I, I knew of him. I knew it. I knew both of them. Anyhow, uh, it, it, uh, right before the football spring practice, uh, 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 she was riding her bicycle around, and she get every uh, player's numbers, and the, the photographers are taking their pictures, and she had them coming, and she's riding her bicycle on the football field. No, just up on uh, be on 
Yeah. Practice field. Practice field. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. It was kind of like a press day. Yeah. yeah. She'd, yeah. She'd, she'd be out there running, riding up and down, chasing players down and telling them to go here and there. Yeah. She was kind of legendary. She was, yeah. she, she was really outgoing. I mean, she oh, was, yes. was really. Mm-hmm. If, she, if she would see you a half a block away, she would say, Oh, how you doing? She'd say, yeah. well, I mean, But Eric was so reserved. Eric yes. Was so reserved. Yeah, yeah, yes. But well, they she, made a good team, it sounds like. Oh, yeah, yes. They made a good team, yeah. They well, <laughs> this position of sports information director through the ages has really been one about building relationships with the media. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's changed quite a bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, I think so. How Since you retired in 93? Uh, 96. 96, yeah. okay. Um, there have been a lot of changes in the media world, in sports information departments, in athletic departments. Can I ask George a question? Yeah. George, what is it? What do you think about uh, uh, the joining the British, uh, uh, the uh, Big Ten Network? What do you think about? Uh, what do I think the about the, the Big Ten Network? Yeah. <coughs> what do I think of this the network? Yeah. It's making the conference a lot of money. Yes, it is. This year, it's, it's going to be money. between 24 and 25 million per wow. team. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Per team? Per, yeah. per yeah. team. Per school. Not team. Per yeah. school. Right. I, yeah. I can yeah. I can tell you that. Every other league in the country wishes they had it. Sure. Yeah. That's yeah. right. They're all jealous. Yeah. Of yeah. 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 And they're all trying to emulate yeah. it yeah. to one, one degree or another. I'm sure Bowlesby will try to do that with the Big 12. Oh, know. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I saw in the morning paper they listed the salaries of the commissioners around the country. Yeah. Did you see that story? No. no. Uh, the commissioner. Which paper? Uh, USA Today, but the register carried it also. Okay. And. Uh, I figured when Bowlesby went from Stanford to the Pac-12 that they must have backed the truck up for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but <laughs> here's what here's what the here's what USA Today reports. Uh, Jim Delaney at the Big Ten gets 1.8 million dollars per year. Two million. And Thank he is, and he is not the highest paid commissioner. The highest paid commissioner <laughs> is in the uh, Pac-10. I can't mm-hmm. think of his name. He gets one point almost two million. Okay. Uh, it didn't have Bowlesby's salary because uh, too new. he's too new, but his, pre- his predecessor, when he got fired, was making about a million and a half. So I'm figuring Bowlesby yeah, is probably uh, making more than two. I bet he's over two. Yeah. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. So these, these commissioners mm-hmm. are, are it's doing a money, well. Money, yeah, money. Don't, don't, don't feel too sorry for the commissioners. No. I never have. <laughs> when he left here, I think he was making about, uh, what, 350 375 yeah, so. I think Stanford doubled that. Didn't yeah, they? I think so, yeah. And, and boy, gave him a nice place to live on top of that's right. paid for. That, that's quite a jump in seven years from 350 to. But that, Bob will do, do a really good job down there. Yeah. That fact, uh, and did you say they fired the former they, Big they, 12? They fired the former Big 12 commissioner because all those Big 12 schools kept jumping ship, you know. The, oh, okay. the league was about to go under. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. You well, watch Texas. it with that league back together. <clears throat> yeah. Well, there's talk now that the Big 12 is going to be more than 12 teams. That Florida sounds State, like Florida Notre State's Dame, going in. There's big talk about Notre Dame. Yeah, big talk. And f- as well as Florida State. Uh, I don't think big, Notre Dame will ever join the Big 12. I can't see it. No, I don't no. either. I would, All their natural I would not, rivalries. I would bet a lot of money against well, that. Well, I bet Florida State does. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to join the conference, though, guys, with this BCS change yeah. going on. If Notre Dame ever joins a league, it'll be the Big Ten. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That would be good. It would. Mm-hmm. It would. i tell you what I don't like about the Big Ten network is – the impact it's had on start times for football and basketball. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think they promised a lot of things as far as programming for women and wrestling and some of the, if you will, Olympic sports. And I don't, I don't see it. Um, it affects yeah. wrestling start times when they do involve it with their programming. Uh, I don't like it. Well, I'll tell you how sports have changed. We're talking, we're talking about the old days versus today. Uh, there was a time when the we had a we had a, a group of faculty members that ran the athletic program. It, it was called the faculty, was the, board, the board in control of athletics. The board yeah. in, in control of athletics yeah. at the University of Iowa, and I'm telling you, they were in control mm-hmm. because the faculty controlled the Big Ten. Yeah, and by God, they I mean if they what the faculty said went. They had their pictures in the front page I, of every and football I'm wondering, program. And, and, and of course, one of, one of the one of the members on the, our faculty was Bob Ray, who chaired mm-hmm. that committee for so many years, mm-hmm. and he was president of the NCAA a number of years. I'm wondering what Bob's been dead now for 
almost 30 years. That long? I'm wondering what he would think today if he came back and saw these start times, playing on Sundays, mm-hmm. playing late Saturday night, play, Friday, play, on play, Friday? playing basketball games on the other side of midnight. I mean, it's just nuts. Playing, yeah. I don't like uh, the fact that uh, we're and, playing and Thanksgiving then, week. They, and, but then, they, then the NCAA keeps hammering this student athletes. They're student hyphen athlete. Well, if they're students, oh, treat them like students. Don't make them play. Don't make them play at all. God did not intend for football to be played at 11 o'clock in the morning. Just or to play 13, 14, 15 yeah, yeah. games in yeah, a season. Yeah, it's yeah. not yeah. good for yeah, the body. Exactly. It's all but, money. But, that's, but, right. see, that's another thing. When you, when you need more money for the program, they don't they don't add a football game for the benefit of the football players. Mm-hmm. They add it for the benefit of the other sports. When I was a student, it was nine games yeah. in a season. And tickets mm-hmm. were $8. Yeah. When I came here, the, the Big Ten basketball uh season was limited to 24 games and only the Big Ten champion went to the NCAA mm-hmm. tournament. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's right. We, and nobody, nobody went to the NIT. Mm-hmm. Didn't allow it because the faculty didn't think it was the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. And now they're playing a minimum <laughs> of probably with the yeah. Big Ten tournament. Then they four games. postseason basketball yeah. tournaments. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And yeah, pre-season, and and these pre-season all, these, all this preseason yeah. stuff. They're playing in November now. <clears throat> yeah. We used to never start basketball until the 1st of December. Yeah. Yeah, no, you we had, had have, have, have a dozen games in uh, November. You had football mm-hmm. players who were able to play basketball. Yeah. You had football players who were able to play baseball, baseball or to yeah, wrestle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's never going to happen again at a, yeah. at a big is $24 million. Dollars. There well, you go. It's all there about the bucks. But, but you're right, uh, Dirk. Uh, television is now telling the faculty what it will, what, what it will and won't do. You know, and, and, Back in Bob Ray's days, the faculty said, listen, our game starts at 1 o'clock. If you want to televise it, we'll let you televise yeah. it. Otherwise, see you later. Yeah. No, they don't have a choice. They have no choice. Yeah. Well, somebody close to our heart on uh, this show was Al Grady. You have any good Al Grady stories? Yeah, Grady, Al Grady. <laughs> Grady was a dear friend of mine. Yeah. He uh, was his yeah. opinion. Yeah, he yes, was. He was. That's right. I know. He yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was a good good guy. He, was, he and my wife used to go to the roof of the football press mm-hmm. box and uh, before each game and sing the national anthem together. Really? Yeah, my wife Ann, who uh-huh. died, yeah. died uh, about mm-hmm. 28 years ago. Has it been that yeah, long? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I re- she, she, didn't uh, she work with you? Yeah, she, she mm-hmm. was she was a play-by-play typist and yeah. mm-hmm. she was really, she knew all the media guys. You know, they, the members of the media were some of my best friends, you know, which mm-hmm. is... Yeah. Uh, today, with technology and everything, it's such an impersonal sort of a relationship that you don't get to know people. But my God, I saw, I remember all, all Ron Gonder's kids born, you know, and I remember when Bob Brooks's kids were born. Mm-hmm. And Brooks and Gonder are still two of my dearest friends. Yeah. Yeah. Good guys. Yeah. And Grady was a terrific friend. Grady used to call me up on a su- <laughs> Sunday, back before the Press Citizen had a Sunday paper. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is during the football season. I always get a call from him on sa- Sunday afternoon. And he would tell me, I would just say, hi, Al, and he'd start talking. He would, te- he would tell me his impression of the football game. And basically what he was doing was reading me his column. Yeah, and I would read right, the yeah. next day. And that's when his, he, the first time you'd see him in print would be Monday. So I, whatever he told me on Sunday, I would read on Monday. Uh, I'll be darned. Now, <laughs> what separated Al from the, the Gus Schraders and <coughs> Tate Cummins and, uh, and the other sports writers of the day? Well, Al was Al didn't care if you knew he was a big fan. Al, Al wanted Iowa to win. I mean, I've I would I've mm-hmm. seen Al get so mad at, at an Iowa baseball game, but Earl has too. He, <laughs> he would get up and walk out of a baseball game. He was he was get mad when the shortstop booted the ball or something, and the Hawkeyes would, <laughs> would blow a lead. I mean, you just don't you know baseball is a game you just usually do, usually don't get that emotionally involved yeah. with. Yeah. But Al would just get so uptight with that stuff, <laughs> and he just loved to see Iowa win, and he didn't care who knew it. He, and he wrote like that. He, he wrote like a fan, and I, I think that's why he endeared himself to his readers because mm-hmm. they, they saw they, they could feel their own uh, yeah. emotions in his in his columns. Did a Gus Schrader <clears throat> write like that at all? Gus, Gus Schrader was a different type of writer. Gus, Gus liked to see our win, but he wasn't nearly into it like uh, what, uh, Gus. Gus was a very good sports editor, you know. Yeah, women liked the way Al wrote. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who did? Women. Oh, women? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he sure had a lot of patient. women fans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, I bet uh, if he broke his t- uh, column down percentages, he, uh, he had 60 to 70% women 
about 30% men. Yeah. And how many sports writers or media people, <clears throat> when they died, left money to the university mm-hmm. athletic department that they covered? I bet zero. Boy, he, he did. That's so yeah. unique. Oh, he yeah. did it before he died. Yeah, actually. he did. He left a lot of money to the athletic department. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He yeah. loved Iowa. He used he to did. say that's putting your money where your mouth is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I still remember at his funeral at St. Mary's, yeah. as we all walked out at the end of the service, the Hawkeye fight song on yeah. the organ, yeah. that big pipe organ. Do you yeah. remember the eulogy? I you remember you lost your eulogy. Yeah. You lost, you I, lost I, 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 I <laughs> lost it. Sister, what do I do? Wing it. <laughs> Wing it. <laughs> I, I did. Yeah. Give me one of these. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. Um, I lost my eulogy. Sec Taylor. <laughs> Sec Taylor would have been, he was dead when I came down. Oh, was he already? Yeah. yeah. But he was a legendary sports editor over at the, it, it, how, I'll tell you how it's changed in the media the, versus those days and today. The, um, the biggest name on a newspaper used to be the sports editor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now nobody knows who the hell the sports editor is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't, do you know who the sports editor is? You, at the Press Citizen? It's uh, Ryan Suckamo. Have you ever met him? I've met him, okay. but uh, I'm, I'm not putting Ryan down. I mean, that, no, that's just that's, the way. Yeah. That's just the way it is today. Yeah. I, I know Ryan pretty well. He's a nice person, but it's it's just a different world. But when you know Grady and Gus Schrader, Jerry Jurgens at Davenport, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Russ Smith at Waterloo, Sec Taylor over at Des Moines, those guys were they were the biggest names on their papers. And it was yeah. hard work yeah. back then. Oh yeah. They had to travel, G- and they G- had to file it Gus, now. Gus Schrader, Gus Schrader, I'll tell you how Gus Schrader car- car- covered Iowa football. He, 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 during the game, he was a play, uh, the color analyst for Frosty Mitchell, the color commentary. Yep. Then after the game, he went down, talked to players and coaches, came up and wrote a column and wrote a game story. So he wrote two pieces on the game, plus did color commentary during the game. And it takes a lot out of you to do oh, yeah, yeah. color or play-by-play of a game. You're you're worn out, and then immediately you have to go follow the coaches yeah, and yeah. players and get their stories, and then you have to go write it, and then, yeah, it's it's amazing what they had to do back then. Do you remember what we all reached for the first thing on Sunday morning <laughs> after an Iowa fall football game? Peach, peach, peach. A big peach. A big peach. A big peach. Oh, man, I'll tell you, that was a wonderful yeah, paper. Yeah, and yeah, great with, writing with, with all the, these guys with, we've mentioned With here. the machine gun voters. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. How about, uh, let's talk TV for a second. John Campbell. Yeah. He, I'll tell you what, folks, enjoy him while he's on yeah, TV because yeah. they don't make him like him yeah, anymore. Yeah. They don't hire guys like John Campbell who cover outdoors, uh, you know, hunting and fishing and and do that, I think, in-depth personal approach to his interviews with football yeah. and basketball. And John was taken into the Press Box Hall of Fame uh, last mm-hmm. uh, year with Bill Hattie. And, Deservedly yeah. so. We had him in here about, what, three years ago? Yeah. and. He talked a little bit about retirement, but not knowing when, and we're all hoping that that's not yeah. soon, but he's getting to that yeah. point, yeah. I'm sure. He uh, started in the same big year fish that Hayden made. Did. He, yeah. he, came in, he came in the same year Hayden did, and, yeah. and when Hayden shut practice down, oh, mm. did John get upset. Oh, oh, he really got mad. And he got mad at me because I couldn't talk Hayden into opening practice. I said, what the hell do you want to go to practice for, John? He just said, it's something you don't have to do anymore. You know? <laughs> and they, you know what? Those guys finally figured that out. Initially, they didn't like the idea they couldn't get in. But then, yeah. they realized, you know what? If he keeps everybody out, he, I mean, he kept everybody out, then don't have to go to practice. Nobody knows what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to get scooped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, John's somebody <clears throat> special. I got to work with him for seven years, yeah. and he's to d- to this day yeah. I consider him a friend. And, yeah. uh, he, he's, and a, he's a really good person. Yeah, and he's the kind of guy that when he sees you on the street, you know he's busy. Yeah, he's on his way to another story, but by God, he'll stop and talk to you. Mm-hmm. And even if it's at a game, you know, yeah. uh, that's just the kind of guy he is. And a lot of people in the media, especially TV, uh, uh-uh. it's more about ego and and. Uh, John's one of the throwbacks. Yeah. Is he the guy that started Friday Night Lights? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. In Iowa? Is he the first one? Absolutely. Yeah, that's and now everybody's deal. copying Yeah, that. exactly. Yeah. That's a wonderful program. I yeah. love it. You know, it is, it is good to see high school football get that kind of coverage on Friday oh, Night. Yeah. Channel 7 does a really good no, job. No, they do a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Theirs is even longer than Rick, Channel Rick, Rick Coleman has 30 minutes. Yeah. 
Or after the news. Yeah, yeah it's after the news. I like right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I like it. You can Catch get both. All the scores. You can get right. KCRG right. and then flip it over yeah. Yeah. to uh, Channel yeah. 7, and you've got that. Um, we've got about five minutes left, and we haven't talked much about Jim Zobel. Jim yet. Zobel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Where do you begin with yeah. Jim? <laughs> Jim, 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 uh, you know, Jim has a reputation of being the cheapest guy on the uh, mm -hmm. Iowa media circuit <laughs> and deservedly so. I was going to say. <laughs> deservedly so. <laughs> deservedly so. <laughs> but you know, I'll say this for Jim, he, he played that role to the hilt. Yes. Yeah. He played, he, he, oh. once he got into that thing and he realized that everybody was <laughs> kind of pegging him for a Jack Benny, he just played the hell out of the role. <laughs> uh, and and uh, uh, Lute Olson tells a good story. Uh, Lute used to go over to Des Moines to do a Sunday TV show with yep. Zobel, yep. <laughs> and uh, he said that they would go out to lunch afterwards, and uh, and he said I Lute would pick up the tab, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he got out, and he said they got out and had lunch, and Lute he said I reached in my wallet pocket, and I, said, I realized it in my wallet. <laughs> I said Jim, I'm not kidding you. I don't have a wallet. You have to pay for this. <laughs> and he, he says Zobel told me he says he says well he says. I'll pay for it if you don't tell anybody. Have you seen Lute lately or talked to Lute? Uh, no, but Phil Hattie told me he saw him at the Final Four and uh, mm. didn't talk to him, but they waved. And uh, Lute, Lute is remarried for the yeah. third, time, third time, and uh, apparently it's working out well. And, uh, I hear his health is better. Must be. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. If he's caught the final four, it must be pretty good. Yeah. 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 For a while, he wasn't even traveling. He looked, yeah. he looked good on TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we always look good on TV. Yeah. How about George yeah. Raveling? Got any good George Raveling? Oh, George Raveling. Yeah, George Raveling was a piece of work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> George George Raveling left. Left Tom Davis a mother load of talent to oh, oh, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> Nobody had any idea that there were that many good basketball players on the Iowa campus until <laughs> Tom Davis showed up. Yeah. He won there, 30 games. There, there were eight players on that team that they didn't all stick in the NBA, but they all signed an NBA contract, and a lot of them that. stuck. Thank uh -huh. you that. Eight. Yeah. Well, that was Eight out of 12 team. or 13. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, he turned Brad Lowe, Tom Davis turned Brad Lowhouse around to face the basket and became a three point shooter, and Lowhouse made a long career of that in the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> I hope Brad is eternally grateful to Coach Davis. Uh, 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 mm. That was pretty special. There's a nice guy, Tom Davis. Uh, we had him on yeah. about five weeks ago. I think uh, I, I think Rabley's doing pretty well. He he lives out in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and he works for Nike and he's got a pretty good job I think for him. But yeah. he's got to be he's got to be in his seventies by now I would think. Is he that old? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. uh, so maybe he's about clicking, nearing retirement. But I also think he does pack ten uh, basketball. Oh, he does. I've heard him. Yeah. I've heard him late at night on uh, ESPN doing those basketball games out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I think we're about out of time. Uh, so we got about two minutes, uh, George. Anything you'd like to say in in closing? <laughs> I, I I can tell you right now, we want to have you back. Okay. Well, this has just uh, been yeah. a joy for me. Uh, I love right, hearing George. these stories. Yeah. And uh, I just I'd ask you, like I said, anything else you'd like to say uh, before well, we go? I appreciate being here. It's been my pleasure, and always fun to talk about all my old buddies and friends because I had a lot of them. <laughs> you did. They're and not all, they're not all around, all around anymore. But Gene Claus is another guy we. Oh yeah. Around, so. Oh, he's an Iowa City favorite. Yeah. Golden voice. Mm -hmm. Good guy too. Yeah, yeah, really had, good had guy. Yeah, we, As Phil Hattie says, he always he, Gene had the pipes. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Well put. Mm -hmm. And uh, guys, I think this is going down as one of my favorite all-time shows that we've done. It's been fun. I just love it. Uh, but we're going to have to say goodbye. So uh, I will just say on behalf of Bud Supel and Bob Boyd and Earl Murphy, I'm Dirk Keller. We're once again thanking George Wine, the longtime sports information director at the University of Iowa Athletic Department, for being on Sports Opinion here on the TV every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and every Sunday night at 6 p.m. That's Channel 18. If you miss the show, you can always go to my Facebook page and catch it, or you can go to patv.tv, and they've got all of the public access TV shows, including Sports Opinion on, right there. On behalf of all my friends here, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. But remember, either you're a hawk 
or you're not. <laughs> Go Hawks. George, thank, thank you, you thank very you. much. Thank this you. is a blast. Enjoy it.